Since I was five, I've had a fascination for filmmaking. The creative process, the special effects, the costumes, the acting, but above all else, the props. This month on DIY Prop Culture Builds, we build the Elder Wand from the Harry Potter series. On June 26, 1997, J.K. Rowling released the first of seven soon-to-be smash hits in the Harry Potter series that would capture the imaginations of both adults and children alike in the two decades to come. And as expected by the book's seemingly overnight success, the rights for a movie adaptation were soon on the way. At the beginning, Chris Columbus, who had been known for his Home Alone series, was slated to direct. And the first two projects he produced with almost as much success as the books had had, if not more. But as he turned to do the third film, a combination of stressors drove him away from the project. The series would then jump from director to director. This included filmmaking talents such as Alfonso Cuaron, Mike Noel, and David Yates. This was both a plus and a minus to the series, though each film seemed to have a breath of fresh air behind it with a new creative vision at the helm. What was made up for in fresh new ideas and styles was lacking in continuity. A little unknown fact, with a few exceptions such as the invisibility cloak and Harry's Nimbus 2000 broomstick, the series' entire props list had been overhauled between the second and third film with completely new designs. And though the series never had such an extreme visual overhaul again, the effects of different creative minds can still be seen in slight differences throughout all of the films. This of course makes it difficult to choose what version of the Elder Wand to make, and though in form it remains remarkably consistent throughout the movies, the way it has been painted has varied widely. So this time I'm going with the 2005 Goblet of Fire version. The version had a lighter and more varied paint job than the other ones. And though it may be a little more difficult to pull off, it translates really well onto screen in my opinion. To make this prop, you'll need a wooden dowel, modeling clay, a few paints, some paper, a sharpie, hot glue, and a whittling knife or X-Acto knife. To start, Take the wooden dowel and measure 15 inches from the bottom. Cut the dowel there and whittle down the shaft with a slight taper. Leave the tip flat. For the parts that will show on your build, you want a rough, uneven look. Next, take out your modeling clay and begin to sculpt. This part takes a bit of practice, but with some persistence, it will come out just fine. For the handle, sculpt three bumps with dotted holes all over each one. Leave some space between the second and third bump where the runes will go. I sculpted this part over the course of a few days as to not accidentally ruin the parts that I had already done. You can do it all in one go, but I recommend letting one section at a time sit before moving on to the next. The prop has four bumps running down the shaft. I too did all these separately. When you're done, it's time to paint. Make two shades, one darker and one lighter, and then paint the whole wand in the dark shade. Once that dries, do a second coat in a lighter shade, wiping lightly with a paper towel. This gives you unique highlights down the shaft that will make it look more like real wood. In the meantime, take a piece of paper and then cut it so that when wrapped around the end of the handle it will sit like this. Dehydrate it to give it that parchment paper look by putting it in a cup of water, then mixing it with some brown paints. Let it dry. I'm not actually sure if this piece is supposed to be parchment or not, but that's always how I saw it as a kid. So I'm gonna do it that way. If you want, I'm sure you can just paint this part. Heat up your hot glue and wrap the parchment around the handle. Once done, find a reference image online and draw on the runes. Once this is done, take some Mod Podge, or any sort of glossing paint, and give the whole wand a once over. This is the most irritating part, because it takes a few coats, and each layer is supposed to take weeks to dry. I find that depending on the weather, 
I can sometimes get away with a few days. And there you go, your very own Elder Wand. I'm using a new rating system for this series. The skill rating for this build is easy. Anyone can do it with little to no practice. The cost is low, with all the supplies costing somewhere between 10 and $20. On top of that, with those same supplies, you can make three or four wands easily before you need to get more. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you build your own, share it because I'd love to see it. If you want to see something specific next time, then leave suggestions on what to build next month. If you like my stuff, turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.